I know, I know, we're dealing with a phone that is super familiar, not just to the phones that it jumped in a Wayback Machine to get inspiration from, but even to the previous version of this phone that we got in 2020. I feel like a couple of years ago though, the court of public opinion was a bit more lenient on Apple's most affordable iPhone, but I'm gonna get into all of that a little bit later. But for now, I do want to talk about my first day so far with the iPhone SE because there are some things that I want to share about using a phone that quite literally balks at many of the aspects of smartphones that we are used to by now. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? It's been about a day so far with the iPhone SE. Three? 2022 edition? What is the official naming? Anyway, I have some thoughts. Of course, I have to start with the unboxing experience, and if you didn't see it already, I did post a short of it, which you can see in the links appearing above and below. The unboxing experience was really simple, as many Apple unboxing experiences are nowadays because we don't get things like charging bricks included anymore. I will say, though, that I'm always appreciative of getting another USB-C to lightning cable because compared to the C of Android phones and the C2C cables that come with them that I get because of all of those phones, I definitely have far less lightning cables lying around. I will also admit that I felt the same way unboxing this iPhone SE as I did last year. That is to say, I appreciated the nostalgia hit, because back in the day, when this shape of phone was way more abundant, I basically never had that specific unboxing experience that my friends and my peers really relished. To peel the plastic off of a phone that looks like it just came out of a time machine with the home button and the classic form factor, only to almost drop it because the plastic actually wrapped around the phone, well, it was all kind of nice. Anyway, this phone is clearly recycling an old, old design language that we have all but left behind in the current world of smartphones that are all screen all the time. I can see why people might react to the idea of having to pay almost any amount of money for a phone that has way more bezels than its contemporaries. But since I posted that YouTube YouTube short, that TikTok, that Instagram reel about this phone shortly after getting it, I did get quite a few comments from people regarding that very notion. So stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to react a little bit to those thoughts. But putting, let's say, that principle aside, I will admit that the adjustment that I've had to make for this phone for the past day has been rather significant. We're actually years into the transition to full screen gestures and having to go back to this home button has been both hard and refreshing. Hard because there are many things Apple actually uses the home button for that I just simply forgot. Actually, just before filming this video, I held up the self-checkout line at Target because I couldn't remember how to trigger Apple Pay. You're actually not supposed to hit the power button twice like on current iPhone 13 models. Instead, you have to press the home button twice while on the home screen. <laughs> uh, it took a little while for me to figure that one out. Swiping up from the bottom is of course not the way to go home, but instead it brings up the control center. I'm actually kind of okay with this because on other iPhones, you have to swipe down from either side of the front camera to get to it or the notifications. But in any case, it's a short time to get used to the way things simply are, just like it didn't take long for me to getting used to hitting the home button twice for getting to the recent app screen. But if there is one thing that I do wish this iPhone SE kind of just left in the past, it would be the storage options. Now, the model that you're seeing in this video is the 256 gigabyte model, so that is kind of nice, but 64 gigabytes of storage is the base model. It kind of makes sense for those users who aren't gonna use their phones for much more than just phone things, but if you are at all trying to game or do 4K video recording, you can fill up that amount of storage in a hurry. Okay, allow me to confirm some of your, let's say, preemptive thoughts right now. This screen, it is small, and uh, I can definitely feel it. Not just in the lack of size, but I can also tell that this screen is a little less bright, a little less colorful, obviously lower in the refresh rate compared to other phones like my iPhone 13 Pro and my iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now, obviously, this is not going to be a fair comparison. I mean, take a look at these two phones. Uh, but I think it is important to mention in case you happen to be coming from a phone that might have a screen that is more vivid and, let's say, smoother. What I will also say, though, is that not everyone has the luxury of that level of choice. I'm certain there are people out there right now watching this phone on the 2020 iPhone SE, and they're happily scrolling on TikTok or Instagram or playing games because that's the phone they have. And honestly, if this is the smartphone that you are able to use on the daily and that's it, you can do much worse than this, and you're probably going to have a pretty good time still. That's even more true in this iPhone SE because the Bionic A15 bumps all the core metrics up. The processor brings 5G to the table and enough power to jump in and out of all of your apps and play all of the high-powered games. I mean, speaking personally and somewhat specifically, it is nice to come back to Genshin Impact on a phone that actually has controller support enabled. I'm just saying. One other thing that proves fairly reliable with the iPhone SE is the camera. Well, 
maybe just the rear camera. The front facing camera is a 7 megapixel shooter and it happens to fall in line with a lot of recent front facing cameras that I've tested that don't do 4K recording. Um, but it does get the benefit of that smart HDR thanks to the Bionic A15. Uh, so we are going to get a little bit better rendering in the background here. Um, I am in a very contrasty area so the super bright areas are still going to be pretty dang bright but at least they're going to get a little bit of that processing to help it out. In all honesty, I do consider this a significant downgrade compared to the mainline iPhones. I mean, sure, it affects someone like me more than the core demographic of the iPhone SE, but I still have to mention it. Normally, I'd be pretty bummed out that the front-facing camera doesn't have 4K video recording, um, and I am, <laughs> but usually what you would be able to do is just turn the cameras around, use the rear cameras, maybe the ultra-wide in order to get your vloggy type shots as well. But on the iPhone SE, it's a bit of an extra bummer that you only get that one camera. I get that it is kind of the point of the SE to have that sort of throwback design, and thus there's only one camera. Uh, but that being said, you know, using this rear camera, 4K at 24 frames, I just don't know if it's wide enough for this kind of real vloggy type shot that you might be looking for. But the Bionic A15 does bring a lot of camera enhancements like Deep Fusion and Smart HDR so that the hardware that you get here will yield the best possible results. I might do a real world camera test on this phone, let me know if you want to see that, but I'll probably keep that one a little bit shorter than my more recent tests. The addition that I think I appreciate the most is photographic styles. I set it to rich contrast and just be done with it. Finally, we have iPhone photos that have more of the contrast that I prefer from Android competitors. There's one last thing I want to talk about before we get to some of those comments. This is just a 24 hours type of video, so it's a little bit more casual. I've not done any deeper camera or battery tests, but speaking of battery, another thing that was omitted from this iPhone SE was MagSafe. I kind of understand it because that just means MagSafe isn't a budget-friendly feature in Apple's eyes, but man, it would have been nice to have. I have MagSafe mounts in a lot of places for the convenience, and the SE just won't play nice with them. Oh my god! At least wireless charging is still available, so maybe a MagSafe accessory of some sort will come around to solve this, but I will admit it is a super niche and super personal problem. So those are the thoughts that I've had thus far with the iPhone SE 2020 edition or third gen or whatever it's supposed to be called. I think there's more than enough room in the smartphone landscape for people who want the throwback design. We all know people who just keep holding on to their iPhone 7s and 8s because they like this home button or they like the size or they just don't want to go to the way that the current iPhones look or feel. And perhaps compared to quite a few of you who might be watching this video, there are also plenty of people who aren't using their smartphones for watching every Netflix episode or for farming Primo gems in Genshin Impact or building influencer profiles on social media. I think the iPhone SE was and still is for all of those people because it keeps true to all of those particular aspects I just mentioned while ensuring that essential current metrics are met. There's 5G connectivity and more than enough power for current and future apps so that this design language has some some staying power. Okay, I actually wrote way more in this script than I expected, so before it turns into a full-on video, let me get off the teleprompter and take a look at some of those comments. Do you think they'll ever make it without the button? If so, think it'll be anytime soon? Honestly, I don't. Um, I think that the SE kind of fills a certain niche, like I said in this video, of people who just want to have the old designs. There are people who just prefer to have a bit more bezel on the top and bottom, better for grip and landscape, and also the home button is just comfortable. It's just something that most people can kind of fall back to if they find themselves in a place in iOS where they need to like get out or something. Dude, this form factor is older than TikTok. Why are you unboxing one? Do you realize how unboxings work? Like any device that comes through, we are going to share the unboxing experience of them. I will admit that there are certain phones that I don't really bother to do the unboxing for anymore, but when it comes to this one, like I said before, the retro throwback um, kind of actually adds to the unboxing experience, even if there are things in the box that are no longer there. Just a repurposed new iPhone 8 with a new processor. If you like nostalgia, the button, or you need five-year-old tech because you're taking the DeLorean for a spin at 10.04 precisely. I mean, nice that you had the DeLorean um, reference in there, but yeah, I mean, nostalgia is a huge thing. I actually went to Twitter to try to get some uh, some thoughts from people about what the biggest nostalgia grabs were from the last couple of years. Only one person responded, so make sure you get on my social media networks. Uh, but shouts out to Michael Pepper Tech uh, for saying basically the Moto Razor. I mean, the Moto Razor, uh, it is a smartphone compared to the Razors of old, but it definitely was trying to have the same form factor of those previous phones. Uh, the same thing kind of goes for the iPhone S. I mean, come on, we have the form factor from before just with updated guts and updated like many other parts of the phone uh, that you might have in other smartphones. So it's kind of the same thing, kind of. 
While the screen size is great, the lack of expandable storage and a headphone jack automatically break any deal. See, the thing is, the lack of a headphone jack is basic now when it comes to smartphones. It's a basic design trope. Uh, unfortunately, you have to pay for um, certain phones that may not have nearly the amount of power that this has, um, or even like as good of a camera, even if there's only one camera right here. Like, you are having to make your concessions in certain places just to have that headphone jack. Far few phones that have this level of let's say reliability and performance on the daily actually have a headphone jack either. To that previous point, I'd rather pick up a used iPhone 12 mini with less bezels and sub-6 support for the same price. Yeah, I mean, if you can find one that is around the same price or less, then all more power to you. But that just means that you prioritize certain features that phone has over this. And there are people out there who prioritize what the iPhone SE provides. The screen just sucks. I've used an iPhone 8 for a while and I'm just not a fan of it, especially not in 2022. Let's see how the battery holds up. I mean, I see where you're coming from with that. If you have used one of the older iPhones for some time, even during that era, and then you see how phones have evolved over time, I totally get it. Current designs are here for a reason, but I would argue in this video that there's a reason why this phone still sticks around. I wish they created a larger one, given I still mask up, I prefer the fingerprint reader. Now here's a thought that I actually kind of really, really resonate with because I think a fingerprint reader finally has to come back to the current iPhones, the mainline iPhones. I mean, if we have like the iPad Air or the iPads that have the fingerprint reader in the power button, there's more than enough room to put them on the actual phones. And I think that would be really awesome to see. Granted, um, iOS did update so that you can unlock it even if you have a mask on. So that might be, you know, somewhere in the middle, but still, a fingerprint reader would be nice even if it's not this home button. The ultimate sleeper phone, I'm not buying one new, but I will definitely buy one used on eBay in a few years. I mean, there's this is actually a pretty interesting thought because this phone at 429 at the base model, but maybe you should pay the extra 50 if you're interested in it for better, for much more storage. Um, this is the phone because it has the Bionic A15 that will have a lot of longevity. You're gonna get all the updates, it will stick around for a long time, and if you get it years from now for let's say half the price, let's say two years from now for half the price, it's still a viable phone even in that time frame. Oh, and by the way, if there are some comments in here that I did not respond to, if you're just going to be snarky and mean in my comment sections, don't expect me to respond to it. So, you know, just putting that out there. And so there you have it. It's just been 24 hours, so I didn't have a ton of comments to go through, but hit me up on all of the networks and the links that are found below. I'm actually looking to get back on my social media consistency, so your engagement would be very appreciated. For future content on the iPhone SE, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Sound off by hitting me up on all those social media platforms, hitting the like button, and getting into the comments. From there though, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea, everybody.